Okay, YouTube, haven't uh, done anything other than slide this into position. There we go, there's uh, working up the cogs here. Haven't adjusted the positions at all. It shifts into the big, big ring. Yeah, didn't really have to do anything. All the cogs are still lined up. I don't have to re-index my gears. There's the low. I uh, might have to tweak that a little bit. Looks like the might have to adjust the B tension screw there a little bit. So yeah, we have a little bit of uh, tweaking to do there. Looks like that's about the limit of what you can do with a. This is a nine-speed rear Dior XT. I'll to play with that shifting right there. That's that one's okay. See, that's the original. 36 low, but the 42 it goes in there, okay, but yeah, doesn't quite want to drop down. Good morning, YouTube. So I've been looking around, searching online. What I really need to do is to lower this whole rear derailleur down so it clears that large cog. It's actually a nine-speed mountain bike part. Nine-speed long cage, and I'm running it with 10-speed indexed road shifters, which is why I have to run in the nine-speed. I can't run the, the newer direct mount 10-speed rear derailleurs. But it turns out uh, Wolf Tooth makes this part called the Road Link. They also make a uh, part called the goat link which is for 10 speed mountain bike parts but this is for 9 and 10 speed road bike parts and here's what it looks like just a little tiny aluminum part and what this does this attaches right where the original part screwed in and it locks in around the uh, the driller hanger and then it gives you a new hanger that's about that far lower and a new stop for your B tension screw so I think I'm gonna pull this one off and I'll show you what it looks like when I get it the new part on there okay so I've got the old part off and then here's your road link and that guy goes right over there so let's get that put in I'll show you what it looks like okay there I got the road link installed you have to get this little piece sticking out that you get into the old B tension screw tab and then all that this road link does is pretty much drop your attachment point down which should get the inner pulley down that much lower to clear the bigger cog because that's the main problem so let me get the thing screwed back in there and we'll see what it looks like okay I got it screwed in there I may have to readjust everything but there's the 11 let's see if we can climb up the cassette there we go here we're on the 36 and look at that so there I'm in. Let me drop to my low, low ring up front. Oh, there we go. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah. Got to. I have to tweak it a little bit. You have to go in a little more. I had, used to have this B tension screw in all the way, and it wasn't quite enough. <laughs> now it's just barely in. Yeah, I think that works pretty good though. Wow. That is low, so I'm better than two to one on the crank because I've got a 20 tooth up front and then 42 in the back, so it takes 2.1 rotations up front to get one rotation in back. Yeah, so here's your B tension screw, and you can see it pushes against that little tab on the either the hanger or, in this case, the road link has an extra tab and if you go too far as you rotate this up that screw angle changes and at a certain point it misses the end of the tab and then it just 
that's that's as far as you can adjust it so yeah now I've just barely got a little bit there but yeah I think that's a, a good result $24 $25 uh, I think online it's $21.95 but I didn't want to wait a week for shipping and they had it in stock a couple towns over so I ran over and picked it up so yeah big uh, shout out to the guys at Sunbike they were open at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning so I guess that's where the uh, brick and mortar stores really pay off as they say support your local bike shop I hadn't hadn't been to that shop before but I think I'll I'll have to go down there they the whole section of the wolf tooth components they had all the uh, 40 42 44 tooth cogs in there just on the hanging on the shelf ready for sale so yeah that's a pretty good place but yeah thought I'd show you that. I'm going to try to get this dialed in and then go out for a ride today and we'll see how that bigger cog works. I don't lose my 36 tooth gear. Now that's actually a pretty nice gear. I like it but there's a few times when I wish I had a little lower and now I do. So this was let's see about retail 67 for the cassette and about 22 for the road link so you're looking at what $89 retail for the upgrade this is a road or a cyclocross bike and I'm running a nine speed mountain bike rear derailleur here and you need the road link there's also the goat link which is for the 10 speed mountain bike parts but if you have a road bike and you want to run either the 36 or the 40 or 42 tooth cassette that's a really good way to go it just drops right in gives you the clearance you need and you don't have to max out this uh, B tension screw cuz that's that's what I had to do before and it you know I was pushing I guess I was well beyond the range of adjustment that was meant for that part and now it's uh, now I'm I can adjust it in or out as I need to rather than just having it cranked all the way in and hoping it worked <laughs> so yeah there we go just show you up front I'll show you why I have the mountain bike uh, nine speed derailleurs on here yeah, so this is the reason I run the 9-speed mountain bike parts, because I have 10-speed road indexed shifters, and I have those mounted on a retroshift brake lever. So this is my shifting right here. I can click, click through the gears right there. And so because of that, because of the pull ratio of the 10-speed road shifters, I have to run the 9-speed mountain bike mechanicals so that makes it quite a hybrid bike so this is the 10 speed Shimano shifter I like these because I can flip this uh, lever here so you can see now I don't have index shifting anymore I like that because if say my rear derailleur gets tweaked a little bit on a fire road or mountain bike trail and I'm 20-30 miles from home, it would be a real pain if your indexing was off and you couldn't shift gears. Well, I can just spin this bale and go from index to friction. So with friction shifting, you can get infinite adjustment. So if you have to kind of get in the middle of two gears to make them work right, that's no problem at all. I've been happy with 10 speed. This should make me even a little bit happier. So I'll let you know how it works. If you have any questions about that, I'll post up the links to the various parts in the video description. And you can uh, post any questions in the comment section below that. And as always, thanks for watching.